everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of running backs who are hoping for plenty of touches come their way. It's Freeman's Falcons going up against Ingram Saints. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you. We are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. Hi again, folks. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And as we all know, Charles, offenses today, they're driven by the passing attack. But Larry highlighted in the open a couple of running backs who might just disagree with that assessment. Yeah, and sometimes, occasionally, you get a game where running backs will match each other, kind of carry for carry on opposite teams. But for the most part, they focus on themselves. How many touches will they get? And can they create big plays for their own team? And both of these guys, certainly more than five, 10 touchbacks. They're workhorses. To return it, Alvin Kamara. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Well, last week, New Orleans won over Chicago 20-12. Now at 5-2 as Drew Brees brings him onto the field. And in that game against Chicago, Brees 23-28, Charles, and an eyelash under 300 yards, 299. That's pretty efficient. Actually, that's darn good because the Bears came in with the sixth-ranked defense. But how about that? Not throwing a touchdown pass for Drew Brees the second time in his last five home games. And prior to that, he'd done an NFL record 60 straight times. <laughs> so this is unusual. But I think he's enjoying this season watching his defense play so well. And he knows he doesn't have to go out there each and every time and light up the scoreboard. And a former Heisman winner. This is Mark Ingram. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Let's get a quick look at the Saints offense. Michael Thomas emerged from Ohio State as a mature route runner and a guy with tremendous ball skills downfield. But as one veteran New Orleans Saints player told me last year, his best attribute, he cares so much about the game and is all about winning. No matter what they need him to do on the field, he's willing to go get it done. Second down, Ingram. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. And here now the defensive starters for Atlanta. There's a lot to like about Robert Alford's play. Tenacious, tough, gritty, able to run. The one thing he's trying to clean up, gets a little handsy at times with receivers. Sometimes he'll work out with boxing gloves in practice to remind himself to keep his hands off of those guys so he can just go ahead and make plays. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. It's complete to Flader. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Breeze finding Flader for New Orleans first. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. This is Ingram on first and 10. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there to swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. Can't wait to see what the second quarter has in store. We'll head back to New Orleans after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and ten to start things out. that time. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Breeze. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Well, that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. Now the ninth-year man from LSU, Thomas Morstead, on to punt. Back deep here, Andre Roberts. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Atlanta Falcons taking the field, coming off a win. Finally, they put an end to that three-game losing skid they had in a monsoon up against the New York Jets. They were able to hold them off, win 25-20. to Yeah, Matty Ice, Matt Ryan had three fumbles, lost two, but still threw for 254 yards, two touchdowns, including the game winner to Mohamed Sanu. So give the Falcons credit for being gritty and finding a way to finally beat someone in the <laughs> AFC East, yeah, right? They lost to Buffalo, Miami, and New England prior to that. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And he'll work his way forward up to the 22. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Yeah, that wasn't a big run. Just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there. And you throw it again. You throw it again. Then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. Now Ryan on second down. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action.
Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. So a jump there defensively. It's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. the shotgun Ryan and finding the tight end Hooper and getting this just shy of midfield they'll spot it at the 49 and now we won't see a play on first down we're going to get a timeout instead as he'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one So here we go, first and ten now. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. False start, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. seconds to go in this first half of play. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Again, Ryan. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. And it's third down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Third down here for the offense after the incomplete pass. Ryan will throw again. He's going to float the in a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 18, and he will be brought down as time has now run out on this first half of action. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. It's a 0-0 game at half, so both sides obviously love their defense and hate their offense. Moving forward, we'll just have to see if it's the first to score that wins. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Saints open. 
opening up on offense. Fleener is by himself here, and he ends up at their own 41-yard line before he stopped on the play. Saints still on the field. Thomas is wide open, able to make the grab. He'll make it right to midfield and then duck out of bounds. Second and eight, Ryan with a nice throw here as he finds his tight end, Austin Hooper. And he'll be tackled at their own 34-yard line. Later on the drive, Hooper is by himself here, and he ends up at their own 49-yard line. So that'll do it from here in Orlando. No points in this one yet, but we'll hand it back over to a man who's always on point. That's Brandon Guy. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Matt Ryan in the offense heading back onto the field, and he's had some time to chew on that interception he threw on his last drive back in the first half. Well, normally we say, want well, to get him right back out on the field and play again, right? But as you mentioned, had the halftime, had to stew about it a little bit. Maybe he'll have a chance to relax a little, kind of laugh and chuckle and let it go. He'll hope to respond positively here to start the third quarter. Third quarter starts with a run by Freeman. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. second and eight. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. To throw is Ryan. He goes underneath to Freeman. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Give him seven on the play, and that'll bring up a third and one. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Here's Ryan to throw. And it's complete. Hooper 
And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. A Falcon first down, Ryan to his young tight end, Hooper. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now a play fake here on first down. And he is out of bounds, but not before taking this down to the eight. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. going to do it for this third quarter of action. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans as we're about ready to rock and roll for the fourth and final quarter. of a yard and it'll be second down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. Stop just outside the five at the six. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Looks like they might be expecting a pass, an extra DB in on third and goal. That's how the game has changed. Now we think pass first, even in goal line situations. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And he'll take this one down inside the five to the three. And the Saints signal for another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This for the lead in the final stages. And the 42-year-old veteran's kick is up and good. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. 
So it took a while to get something, anything on the scoreboard, but we finally have our first points of the contest. And now this becomes a question of can they make this stand up? The defense has been impeccable thus far, and now they need to go out and finish strong. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll be taken down just past the 20 at about the 21 yard line. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. He's back to throw. It's complete. Flaner, right side. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Breeze, one of the best ever in these situations as he's trying to get his guys set. He'll look to throw. He dumps it down to Ingram. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. First down now, but the clock continues to move. And with the clock ticking under 50 seconds now, he spikes it. <laughs> Offense looking to avoid a third and long at second and 10. to throw and he can't get a throw away he's taken down they'll get to the line here but remember it's also third down they'll look to throw he goes underneath to Ingram it'll be a gain of four and that'll bring up fourth down got to be careful here they need to move quickly but it's also fourth now Breeze got to have this one and that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen Hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here, fourth down play, make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. The Falcons in victory formation as they take a knee. And play is stopped here, timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. Heads down to a knee, and that should wrap this one up. And the 
the storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt, the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is, and what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team, there's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column, too? So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. Till next time.